Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear, Houston. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, I'm Matt Arguello, Director of Innovation at the Center for Early Education in West Hollywood, California. For more than 80 years, the Center for Early Education has committed itself to nurturing the lifelong learning and curiosity of children in Los Angeles. We are proud to partner with NASA for this unique opportunity. We have chosen together as our theme because we thrive, learn, and accomplish our goals when we work together. On behalf of Center students, faculty, staff, and administration, thank you for joining us today. Now, to the first question. Hi, I'm Bodhi, and my question is, what are you looking for in space that could help our planet and the people on Earth? Hi, Bodhi. Every single day we're doing things that can benefit, benefit humanity back on Earth and also prepare us to explore even further into the solar system. We're doing experiments on ourselves, learning how human beings can stay healthy in space. We're developing new technologies that help us control our life support systems, like reclaiming and purifying water, and that could actually be used as technology on Earth for communities who don't have access to clean water. So everything we're doing to live in space can also help human beings live better on Earth. Hi, my name is Toby, and my question is, what was your favorite experiment on the International Space Station? Toby, great question. My favorite experiment on the International Space Station was the one that I got to eat. It was us growing hatched chili peppers on our, in our plant habitat. And they grew over the, a long period of time, and some of them got frozen to go back to the ground, but many came back or got to stay with us, and we ate them. They were good. Hi, my name is Brianna, and my question is, do you think we will ever be able to live in space permanently? We are working toward that goal every day here on the International Space Station. There have been human beings living and working aboard the International Space Station for more than 20 years now, and we're preparing to go back to the moon to stay as part of the Artemis program. So we'll need things like permanent habitats, ways to develop power and harness resources from our environment, and we'll also be preparing to push even further on to a trip to Mars, which will be a three-year round trip. So. I don't know when NASA will be sending human beings to other planetary bodies to live there permanently, but we're certainly preparing for longer and longer duration missions. Hi, my name is Lucas. My question is, can you see the season change on Earth from outer space? Lucas, actually, yes, we can, because most of the Earth's land mass is in the northern hemisphere, and right now we're getting snow because of the cold temperatures in the northern hemisphere. We see a lot more snow as it gathers up on that land, so definitely we can see it. And it's fun to watch things as they, as they get greener and greener as the summer comes around, too. Hi, my name is Lou Leet. My question is, how do you feel you can achieve a successful mission? Hi, Louise. For us, I think a successful mission is one where we're, we really work together as a team to accomplish all of our goals. During our six-month mission up here and Mark's year-long mission, we're doing hundreds and hundreds of science experiments and also working every single day to keep the space station systems healthy so that human beings can continue to live and work here. So for us, I think we always want to leave the space station better than we found it, in better working order, hopefully, and also accomplish some amazing science objectives. And we've been doing that a lot lately because we just had a cargo vehicle up here that brought us a lot of really cool experiments. My name is Mateo Vestoy. My question is, what is your favorite thing to do in space? 
Hi, Mateo. My favorite thing to do on the space station right now is to turn off all the lights when it's dark outside. I mean, even closing the screens on laptops to make sure we don't get any, any extra light and to look out at the stars and see auroras and the city lights, especially when there's a full moon out and it lights up the terrain as well. It's, the Earth is magnificent. Hello, my name is Ryan Lopez. My question is, how do you keep from getting dizzy with a space station traveling so fast? Hi, Natalie. That's a really interesting question and one that we're always thinking about and studying when we adapt to being in space and back on Earth. We actually kind of adjust slowly over time to almost ignore our vestibular system, which is the system in your inner ear that helps you understand how your body is oriented. Because even though it feels like we're floating and we can do flips, stand on walls if we want, we are actually falling, like you said, traveling around the Earth at 17,000 miles per hour. And we do feel the pull of gravity, but we're essentially in free fall at the same rate as everything around us. And so when you first get up here, your brain doesn't quite know what to do with that. It's a pretty weird place to be. But pretty soon your brain learns to kind of change the way it processes those signals so that it doesn't seem weird if you're flipping around or standing on the wall while someone else is standing on the ceiling. My name's Abby. Right now, at this very moment, when you look to your left and to your right, outside the International Space Station, please describe exactly what you see. Thank you. Ivy, I, unfortunately, most of the space station doesn't have windows, but I will tell you about the one place where I can look outside to my left and my right. It's in our cupola. So to go into the cupola, it's at the bottom side of the space station, so it's looking towards the Earth. And so when I look to the left or the right, I see the horizon of the Earth. And if it's daylight out, the, the background looks inky black from the, the darkness of space. But constantly changing terrain on the Earth, whether it be ocean or land, desert, beautiful glaciers, it, it's constantly varied and always interesting. Hello, my name is Amelia. My question is, as a fourth grader, what can I do now to help me prepare to be an astronaut in the future? Hi, Amelia. The most important thing you can do is find things that you're passionate about and keep working at them. I think for all of us, astronauts can take so many different paths to becoming astronauts. The only thing you really have to do is have a degree in a STEM field. So keep studying hard in science and math classes, of course. But I think for all of us, we found opportunities that would challenge us, but also that we enjoyed. And for me, I was always seeking out the best team of people to work with because I knew I was gonna push myself to the edge of my abilities and I was gonna make mistakes. And in order to grow, I wanted to be around people who would give me honest feedback, who would support me, and who would teach me how to be better at my job and at school. And so I think the most important thing you can do is follow your passions and continue to push yourself every single day. Hello, my name is Sienna Perara. And my question is, what is the benefit of doing experiments in space as opposed to doing experiments on Earth? There are so many things that behave differently on the space station or in orbit, um, be it uh, protein growth or the way flames burn or the way water behaves. We're going to go ahead and show you how this works right now. We're going to make a really big bubble and we're going to both help control it. So let's see, let's see what happens here. But you can see how this water behaves very differently in space. It makes floating bubbles and you can control it with a straw and it, it's easy to lose control of it, but we're getting good at actually maintaining control of it. So thanks for the question. Hi, my name is Clover Glass. My question is, how will this mission help future missions?
That's an awesome question, Clover. We are constantly testing new technologies and developing new operational concepts that will help us push further and further into the solar system. And for us as astronauts, the best thing we can do to prepare for those missions is to be here aboard the International Space Station. We have so much experience living and working here, and our fantastic mission control team in Houston really knows how to train us to do our jobs well. And so every single day we're learning how to be better astronauts so that someday if we're lucky enough to get assigned to an Artemis mission to return to the moon, we're ready for that incredible mission. Hello, my name is Lulu Brody, and my question is, what time zone does the International Space Station align with on Earth? For example, are you sleeping while we're sleeping here in Los Angeles? Lulu, we actually use Greenwich Mean Time, so we are eight hours later in our day than you would be in Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Frankie, and I'm in third grade. My question is, when you're in space and you're not working, what do you do for fun? Hi, Frankie. We do all sorts of things for fun. We like to look out the window and look back out at the earth. We do things like play with water, like we showed you earlier. We read books, we call home and talk to our families, and we just hang out together. We kind of have our own little space family up here, so we're always spending time with each other when we have time off. Hi. Another thing, actually, Mark's going to show you. Oh, sorry. Uh, another thing Mark was going to show you is we actually have some musical instruments up here. Uh, um, and I think that maybe is the next question, which is Mark's telling me. Um, but we have a guitar and a piano, and maybe we'll let you cut to the next question, then we'll show you our guitar. Hi, my name is Calder, and my question is, how does bacteria behave differently in space? Thank you. Uh, bacteria is different on the space station. In fact, there's some strands of bacteria that, like salmonella, that are actually more strong. So we, um, it's very important for us to continue to study those. Hello, my name is Tennessee. My question is, do you have any musical instruments in space? If so, how do you play them and what do you play? Now we got the right answer for you, Tennessee. Mark's showing you one of the guitars we have aboard the International Space Station. We also have a keyboard, an electronic piano, and there was a saxophone up here for a while when Thomas Pesquet was here. Um, unfortunately, I personally don't have much musical talent, so I haven't played any of these instruments with much success. But a few of my crewmates do, and occasionally they'll bust out some tunes for us and we'll have a little sing-along. Hello, my name is Alexander Connolly, and my question is, what is your job on the International Space Station? Kayla and I both are flight engineers. I'd like to describe us as laboratory technicians. So every day we're maintaining the laboratory as well as helping out with the experiments. So we facilitate the scientists on the ground accomplishing their science objectives. Hi, my name is Audrey. My question is, can humans colonize and live on Mars? If so, when do you think it will happen? Hi, Audrey. I definitely think humans can live on Mars. And that's actually a goal of NASA to push on to Mars and send human beings there to live and work. So for us, I think the near term, we're going to return to the moon, like I mentioned earlier, and learn how to live and work there much closer to home. It's further than I, I've ever imagined going in my life, but definitely a lot closer than Mars. So there is an opportunity to get more supplies from Earth and also have a, less of a communication delay and more support from the ground while we're learning how to do those things, how to 
drive around in rovers, how to get power, how to use resources, and then eventually we'll go to Mars, I think hopefully sometime in the 2030s. So maybe when you're applying to be an astronaut, we'll already be there. Hi, my name is Langston Mitchell, and my question is, what animals do you have at the International Space Station now? Langston, we actually have mice on the space station right now. In fact, I had the joy of getting to clean out their habitats this weekend, or, or maybe Friday. So uh, we make sure we take good care of them up here. Hi, my name is Emma Westheimer, and my question is, if you have been to the International Space Station before, how did it feel physically when you returned back to Earth? This is my very first trip to the International Space Station, so I don't know quite how I'll feel when I return to Earth, but I might ask Mark the same question. He's been up here before, and this time he's gonna be up here for a whole year before he goes home. So Mark, do you wanna talk a little bit how you adjusted last time? Sure, it's a slow process. I definitely remember feeling sore. It's You can't fall down on the space station, so there's a lot of balancing that you don't have to worry about. And so I think some of those smaller muscles that we used to balance get a little weak, even though we exercise a lot to work the major muscles. So tying my shoes and bending over to on one foot was really hard for me at first. Um, sitting up in bed even, I, it was a little challenging. But uh, we adapt quickly as human beings, and I got back to normal before I launched, and we'll, it'll be go through the process again. Hi, my name is Lillian. My question for you is, what is the most interesting thing that happened to you in space that you did not expect? You know, I've spent a lot of time up here, and I didn't think I'd be surprised by anything, but recently I was just looking out the window at the ground, and most of the time we're focused on what location we're looking at, and it looks very two-dimensional. But I noticed as I just kind of looked broadly that I could actually see that the things that were closer to me, the tops of very high clouds, were moving at a different rate because... It, my the orient the orientation of my view compared to them was changing it's called parallax so it was really interesting seeing that there really is some height dif differentiation that you can observe from the space station even though it's all very far away from us hi my name is kate and my question is when the capsule detaches from the rocket how does it feel It's one of the more exciting parts of a space flight, I think, because it's when you get to experience zero G for the first time, the feeling that you're weightless. And so for us on a Falcon 9, um, which is the rocket we launched on, there's kind of two really exciting moments. The moment when the first stage cuts off and the second stage is about to light. And so you actually, you decelerate. So all of a sudden you get thrown forward into your restraints, kind of like your seatbelt. And then the second stage lights and throws you back into your seat again. And so that's kind of an exciting moment. And then when the capsule detaches from the second stage, you're in orbit, you're in free flight. And that's when you recognize, wow, <laughs> I'm in space, we finally made it. Um, and that's actually why we have these things called zero G indicators. We brought uh, the Crew-3 one to the call today, but this is our uh, our turtle um, and her name is Fow, but we basically had her in the capsule with us so that when we got to that moment and she floated up, we knew for sure we'd made it. Hello, my name is Neve, and my question is, do the plants grown on the International Space Station taste different than the plants grown on Earth? My understanding is that the hatch chili peppers that we tried out were actually spicier than they are on the ground. Now, I haven't had experience with hatched chilies on the ground. Even though they were very spicy, I definitely am going to try them when I get back on the ground. So, uh, yes, first reports are that there are differences. I'm Morgan Madotti, sixth grade student at the Center for Early Education. Thank you for joining us today. 
Thank you especially to NASA and the crew of Expedition 66. We're excited to follow along as you continue your important work on the International Space Station and wish you all the best. Thank you and have a great day. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.